Hello, hello, welcome to another live stream. All right, so week two, still clunky. I'm learning. I was doing some research this last week on some of the tech side. I haven't implemented every, anything yet. Just just been uh, just been researching, but I'm very excited. Very, very excited. Now, one thing I need to do here, there we go. Let's see, share, copy link. We're going to the Facebook group right now, my free Facebook group. So those of you that don't know about that, you can go to ChrisTarcoaching.com. I have a free Facebook group that you can join, and I'd love to have you come be in that. So let's see. We're going to go at everyone because in Facebook I can do one post a day where I post where I tag everybody, and it will send it to people staggered. Some people will get this tomorrow. I'm sorry. Facebook is, is a big old stupid head. Here is the link to the Monday morning live stream on YouTube. Hope to see you there. Link will, let's see, hope to see you there. Replay will be available. And paste, post. Definitely seeing I'm going to have to update my uh, social image. All right. All right. We got people here. Hey, welcome, everybody. Uh, hello, Anna. Hello, Jillian. Hello, Jacob. Happy Monday. Hello, Hope. Good morning. Hello, Dagny. Uh, you got the notification. Did you get it on YouTube or did you get it on? Right. You should be because that should be the only place it did. So was it a YouTube notification? Uh, morning SC. I don't know who you are, but morning, morning river. Hello, morning river. Wait, your name's not morning. Hello, river. Good morning, <laughs> Mike. Yeah, made it back to YouTube. Hey, Candace, that's my wife. Hence the same last name. That's not a coincidence. And spring break means I can tune in. My spring break's next week. I'm going on vacation. I'm going to California. Uh, you know what? Can I talk about something that I think is a dumb design? That I didn't think was a big deal, but actually is. I love this Apple mouse. Like, I love this mouse a lot. It's a great mouse. And I've heard people complain about that the charging port is on the bottom. And I never thought it'd be a problem until today I showed up and my mouse was dead. And I wanted to use it. Now, thankfully, I have a trackpad, which is not my favorite thing to use. I use that more for editing. But, yeah, I can't charge my mouse and use it at the same time. What kind of dumb thing is that? But... Yeah. Uh, let's see. DP Cat Lady got both notifications. Oh, all right. Cool, cool. And got it on YouTube. Excellent. YouTube told me where I was and finally able to make it. Yay, Monday. Yeah, good, 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 good. Oh, hey, Lydia. I brought a bucket. In this bucket is a bunch of post it notes that are covering different topics that I just can talk about. So if we get stuck, I'm just going to go to the bucket and draw a post-it note, and we'll just start talking about it and see where that takes us. I, however, would love to answer your questions, so if anybody has any questions, you can ask. Let's just spark a conversation about weight loss, about life, about whatever we want to do. What are y'all reading? Tell me your books. What are you reading? I want to know what you're reading. I'm reading several books. Power of Now, Crucial Conversations, and... What else am I reading? Actually, well, maybe I'm in between several books. I'm reading I'm reading several books like related to my job right now. Those are fun. But yeah. What are you reading? Oh, I was also gonna do sound effects, but I realized I didn't load them onto the board. And I don't know that I can play them. Yeah. Oh, here we go. We got a question. River. What does a recovery day look like for you? A recovery day. So for me, a recovery day is not a recover my whole body day. I don't take many of those. Like if my upper body is sore, my lower half is fine. I don't need to not move my whole body because my upper half is sore. Now, yesterday, <laughs> everything was sore and I went and worked out anyway because you get benefits from working out when you're sore and tired. 
Now, it was an easy one, right? You don't, I don't want to push myself. And so my recovery days, I only really take them about once a week. But even then, I really try to do something every day. But I have to listen to my body. And so if I'm pushing and it's just feeling too hard, I back off. And that's really what happened yesterday. As I just, I still ran, but everything was easy. And so there's something called active recovery. And that's more what I'm a big fan of. I, when I started my journey, thought of recovery as like, I get to sit around and do nothing today. No, actually, I, I genuinely try to avoid those at all costs. Uh, I, I don't want to have days where I, like if I can remember a day where I sat around and did nothing, I don't want to be able to remember two days in my mind at the same time. I need They need to be far enough apart that I can't remember when the last one happened. If So if something's sore, I go do something anyway, which it, which might mean nothing more than walking. Right. It might mean nothing more than I get a walk in. And, and I have days where just life gets away from me and I didn't work out and I've only got 3000 steps at the end of the day. That happens sometimes. They're rare, but it happens. You know, we're talking these days, you know, winter makes it, it, it happens more often, you know, one or two days, maybe it's probably been three or four times a month. Whereas now that the weather's getting nicer, it'll become very rare if ever. So active recovery is just using your body, but you just do much lower intensity. I want to maintain the habit of moving my body all the time. I just dial up and down the intensity. So a recovery day for me does not look like not moving. It looks like just doing movement in a way that's a lot easier. Hopefully that helps. All right. Let's see. Hope. Winning the War in Your Mind. Ooh, I'm assuming that's a book. The Lazy Genius. Sounds interesting. Don't Believe Everything You Think. Don't know that book, but love that title. That is so true. You should not believe everything you think. Uh, Atomic Habits. I got that one right there. That's an excellent book. Where's my Atomic Habits? Oh, there it is. Yeah, it's behind the thing. Great book. Uh, what's the next book club? I want to be able to participate in the next book club. So for those that uh, those of you that are in the guild, we, you know about book clubs, but for those of you watching that aren't in the guild, we do book clubs. And the next one I'll be hosting, it is going to be, well, here, I'll go grab it. It's the eight keys to end emotional eating. This, this is the book we're reading. The eight keys to end emotional eating by Dr. Howard Farkas, who is a clinical psychologist specializing in the treatment of emotional eating. He is the founder and president of the Chicago Behavioral Health and clinical instructor in psychiatry and behavioral sciences at Northwestern University's Feinberg School of Medicine. He is a member of the Academy of Eating Disorders. Of and of the International Association of Eating Disorders Professionals. His book is excellent. So in the Guild, I don't have that scheduled yet, but this is the next book club that is coming. And if you're interested, I'd love to see you at that one. That would be pretty sweet. All right, Dagny. I have a question. If you overate two days in a row, what would your next few days look like? Would you change anything? Well, this is largely dependent upon, this is dependent upon where I'm at in my life. Now, one second, I'm going to take just a brief moment because I have been doing this some. I want to do something here, background, color. I want to change the... Uh, the look of this comment box because again y'all are catching this live i'm going to answer this in a second Let's see can i do a border okay so i can do a border well that border is way too big i don't like the look of that and i feel like we need a splash of color oh yeah, yeah, yeah. let's go with like a bright Ooh, we're gonna go with like a oh you know what we'll do we're gonna pull a color from the scene how about that yeah, and then it matches the desk. So we're going to do that. Got my corner radius. I'm going to make that nice and round there. And I really want to change the background to be more... Oh, there we go. Aha! There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. We can do this. 
Because I want the comment to be really bold. I, I want it to really stand out. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to go here. One second, everybody. I appreciate your patience as you bear with me while I attempt to do some quick design work on the fly. All right, this will work well enough. All right, this is, this is a good job. said I wanted to have it where you can just really see the comment a lot better. So if you over ate two days in a row, what would be, what would the next few days look like? If I'm in a good headspace, like I am, um, I think we're going to put those right there. If I'm in a good headspace where I'm not really going to beat myself up, well, hmm, hmm, wow, this actually depends on why I over ate. If I overate due to like just an emotional overeat and I had just a hardcore case of the of the fuckets, I would probably just move on as if it didn't happen. I wouldn't attempt to compensate. If it was a slight overeat, like I turned to food for emotional eating, but I stayed in my calories or maybe only a few hundred calories over, I might attempt to claw that back over the next several days. I might lower calories for a couple of days, like maybe shrink the size of a lunch or the size of a meal or cut out a snack or maybe a little bit of both. I might attempt to compensate, but if I go more than three or 400 calories over, I don't really, I typically don't attempt to claw that back. I can't say I never do, but I typically don't attempt to claw it back. Now, if I'm in a bad headspace, I don't really want to dwell on it too long, but yeah. All right. Like the YouTube lives. Hi, Rhea. Get notifications on my phone to remind me. Yeah. I, so far as week two of YouTube live and I don't see any uh, signs I'm going back to Facebook. All right. So somebody's asking about the book club. I was talking about that a second ago uh, in my guild. We're going to be doing this book, The Eight Keys to End Emotional Eating. That is not scheduled yet. Don't worry. You'll have plenty of time to, to get it. So you don't, you don't need to worry about it. Anybody that's like, oh, I don't want to miss it. I, I promise you're going to be fine. If you're in the guild, you'll be notified with plenty of notice. I'll make sure you have a chance to read it. Uh, do, 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 do. On the last chapter of that one now. Oh, well, then you know it's a good book. Uh, have it in print and audio. Oh, I've not done the audio of it. That would be good. Why I had a cabin trip ate more than planned. Okay. Oh, the why this is the qu this is the question you asked earlier about the uh, overeating. So uh, yeah, I would just um, attempt to compensate if you can. I mean, if I went way over, I might. Either way, I might try to take a few calories back later in the week. Is what I'd probably do. All right. If you got any weight loss questions. Go ahead. Oh, my question. Do I have the van key? <laughs> my wife asked me about the van key. Uh, check my jacket hanging up on the wall. It might be there. I don't have it. No, I've changed all my clothes, so I don't, I don't have it. It's probably in there. <laughs> Sorry, dear. All right. We're going to the uh, post-it notes. So if you have a question about weight loss. So what this is, is these post-it notes, I have just written like just different things you need to know and do that will help you and it's just going to spark a whole discussion about weight loss. So to this first post-it note, love yourself today. Love yourself today. The reason I wrote love yourself today is because this is an important belief shift that I made at the beginning of my journey that I truly believe you and everybody else needs to if you have not yet made it. If you've already made this shift, then awesome. You know why I'm talking about all this. I used to make the mistake of withholding happiness from myself predicated upon the completion of some goal. I cannot feel fully at peace. I cannot fully enjoy myself until I have had this accomplishment. At that point, I will then feel enough. And I'd get there and I'd feel a little bit and then I would push it further out. I'd get there and I'd push it further out. Because every time I accomplish something, I just... I didn't love myself. I would want to lose weight and then love my body and then care about it instead of doing it in the beginning. So when I say love yourself today, a big part of that is choose to love you as you are right now today before you've lost any more weight, before you've made any more changes. Just go ahead. 
and love yourself now. There's plenty about yourself worth loving right now. So that's what I'd, that's the big part of that. You don't need to lose another pound to love yourself. All right, I'm taking questions. And if you want to ask a question, you can ask it in the comments and I'll answer it. But if not, I've got a bucket where I'm taking, talking about things. Michelle, learning to love myself. Thank you. How do you stop seeing all the bad things in self pics By focusing on the presence of positives and focus on the changeables. Look, if you don't have, this is where the old adage, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. That applies. So when you look at your photos, just say nothing. If you, if all you're going to do is be critical of yourself, just shut up. And if somebody says, this is a great photo of you, and you're in your head thinking it's not, shut up. And if somebody says they post a photo that they love of their family and you're in it and you hate how you look, shut up. It's real simple. If you're going to look at your photo and be critical of it, shut up. That's your answer. Shut up. Well, but I'm thinking it in my head. Then you're not shutting up. Shut up. If all you're going to be is critical, hush your mouth, hush your brain mouth, <laughs> just hush. And anytime your brain says, oh, but look at this terrible thing, you just say, hush, brain. The rest of it's fine. I'm going to choose to believe that they like it. You just, you just tell your brain to hush. Just like if you got a little kid that speaks out of line and they're like saying something really inappropriate, it's like, you just hush. And if the kid doesn't get it and they keep saying it, well, you're like, you hush and we're going to ask you to leave the room. If you want to be in the room, you got to be nice. Otherwise, hush. And that's what you do. When your brain's just going to, when all your brain is doing is going to the bad, you just say hush. <laughs> then say something nice. It, it is that simple, actually. It really, truly is that simple. Just hush. <laughs> so, all right. River, for me, I've really amped up how confident I feel about myself. Clothes that were tight before now feel looser, which only reinforces this for me. Exactly. When you decide to go ahead and just love yourself now, sorry, my in-ear monitors give me grief. When you decide to just go ahead and love yourself now, as you move forward on the journey, you'll actually accept. You'll actually accept the good things that are coming. All right. Charlie, my favorite, find the good things about life and self now. It's the gateway to positive change. Totally true. Totally true. <laughs> You're laughing out loud at the just hush. I know. I mean, it's it's... Sometimes we got to treat ourselves like a six-year-old and we got to parent ourselves a little bit. And that's okay. Nothing wrong with that. Buying smaller clothes is a mindset shift. I need smaller sizes, but man, it's hard to let go of the current bigger ones just in case. How did you approach this? I just threw them away anyway. <laughs> so I told myself this time, if I got to buy bigger clothes again, that's my penance for regaining the weight back. I wanted there to be friction between gaining weight. I wanted gaining weight to actually cause discomfort in my life. And one of them to be, I wanted the tension and pain of realizing if I don't start going back down, I'm about to size out of all my clothes to fit it, that fit, and I'm gonna have no clothes that fit. I wanted there to be pain to gaining weight back. So what did I used to do in the past? I used to take all my fat clothes and, oh, I'd be ashamed to throw these away because I might find myself back and I don't want to buy all these clothes again. So I'd put them up at the top of the closet or in the attic. So that way, once I gained weight, I'd just go dust off the box. It's like my failure box. Like, well, here I am again, old friends. No, no, this last time I just said, screw that, screw that. No, 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 no. I am just tossing my clothes out tossing them out. They're going away. I'm not leaving them. Why? Because I ain't going back. And if I'm going back, I'm going back against my will and I'm going back under duress. That's how I'm doing this. I am not just making, regaining my weight back easy. I want it. I want gaining my weight back to be full of pain, full of pain. I'm not going to make it comfortable because the problem is I kept making myself comfortable the, all the times before as I gained weight, making it easy for me to continue gaining weight. And it's such a twisted thing to say, to be like, you mean to say I shouldn't let myself be comfortable? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. I'm saying you should do something that makes you uncomfortable if you go in a direction you don't want to go. Think of it like guardrails, you know, having the clothes. You start, I got to buy them. You'll, you'll feel them. What would you consider the big rocks of weight loss? Ooh, 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 big rocks of weight loss. 
Big Rock's thinking in terms of like a Stephen Covey thing. If you got to, um, you put your big rocks in first and then you add in all the small rocks instead of putting all the small rocks in and then get the big rocks. Or if you got a big rock in front of you and you know, maybe deal with that instead of the pebbles. But one of the big, big rocks of weight loss, uh, well, the biggest, the biggest is learning to eat when you're hungry and to not eat it unless you're hungry. That's it. That's the biggest. If, if you can learn how to keep food out of your mouth except for when you're hungry, you're going to be fine. Seriously, you're going to be fine. And we always act like there's nothing we can do about it. Oh, if I think a thing, I have to put food in my mouth. No, you don't. You don't. But I have no control. Yeah, you do. But it's really hard. I believe you. But I can't do it. Yeah, you can. Well, I'm not really good at it. Maybe. But you will be. How much have you been practicing it? Well, I don't ever practice it at all. I just think about it. That doesn't count as practice. You got to practice. Well, I haven't practiced it ever, and I've not got good at it. But that's why. Not because you can't. <laughs> it's because you're not practicing. <laughs> well, how much practice? I don't know. Two, three years? Maybe four? Took me four. Took me four years to get to a place where I mostly trust my hunger. And even then, my hunger is a sneaky son of a bitch. I don't blindly trust my hunger. Like, I'm going to still check in on my hunger right every now and then. Be like, hunger, are you telling me to eat the right amount of foods? Or are you being... You being sneaky, but sometimes hunger be sneaky. So that would be the big rock, I would say. Rhea, I'm trying to look at the positives more in general. Usually I complain up and down about daylight savings time. Now, instead of complaining, I'm trying to find a better way to deal with the time change. Yeah, I think there's a difference between, this is my personal opinion, between just acknowledging an annoyance and just needlessly complaining about it. Like, I'm going to acknowledge the annoyance of daylight savings time. It is an annoyance. But but I'm not going to, like, blame it for things. <laughs> I mean, and I'm not going to act like I can't do anything about it, like I can't overcome it. I'm just using that one because I'm not a big fan of it either. But I hear you. Like, ruminating on an annoyance isn't really of much value. I remember one time I was walking. I was in Utah years and years ago, back when I was a missionary. And I was walking down the street and saw a guy. And I was, you know, friendly. Friendly. We always wave and say hi. And said, hey, how you doing? And the guy, the guy said, I'm doing great. How are you? And I'm like, can't complain. And then he responded with, wouldn't do you any good if you did. And I was like, I like that. I like that. He, you are right. I said that to him. I said, I like that. You're right. I said that back to him as I walked away. And here I am 20 some odd years later, still thinking about that guy that shouted that to me. Can't complain. Wouldn't do you any good if you did. Because, yeah, complaining is just a waste of breath. It's okay to do a little. Candace said, I donated all my bigger clothes right away, too. I didn't want them in the house. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I am. Failure box. Thanks for helping me see <laughs> this way. That's right. Them big cl those clothes of uh, box of big clothes. That's the failure box. Don't go back to it. Goodwill is the best place for smaller clothes. Can yes. When you're sizing down, Goodwill. In the middle of your journey, you're like a growing child. You don't want to invest in good clothes because they're just going to grow out of them. You need to approach yourself on the way down. Until you're at goal body, goal weight, just assume you're on your way. So don't don't go invest too much in the wardrobe on the way down. Otherwise, you might, again, it might create pain because you don't want to size down out of them. I feel like I've been gaining my weight back recently. I'm not okay with this, and I'm getting back into the weight loss mindset again. Yeah, yeah, you got to do that. You got to do that. You got to get check your mindset and see if it's pointed in the right direction. Uh, I'm still in bed. Do I have to get up? I don't know. Do you? I'm not sure if you do or if you don't. All right, let me catch up to the comments. They've kind of sped up ahead of me. Oh, how many people are here right now? 34? Okay, okay, okay. Complaining about things just brings your attitude down. Truth. That do be true. That do be true. Aaron, how do I eat only... How do I only eat when I'm hungry, even with a busy schedule? I'm in college and have a few long lectures. Would you recommend packing snacks or just being hungry for a little bit? Well, uh, if you're trying to lose weight, yeah, just be hungry for a little bit. You got to be hungry at some point, so be hungry in a lecture. Nothing you can do about it. You won't die. Uh, just be a little uncomfortable and then it'll go away. But like I maybe don't do that when you're about to take a test, right? Like you probably should have your full mental faculties. Uh, if you're not trying to lose weight, yeah, have a little snack. I, I keep snacks around, but just small amounts of snacks and and not sugar bombs, not calorie bombs. There's I don't want treats at snack time. I want treats at treat time and snacks at snack time. So if I'm hungry, I should eat a snack. M and M's are a treat, not a snack. We you know we don't solve hunger with chocolate. All right. Uh, 
someone says snacks throughout the day, just pay attention to your calories. Yeah, so if you're, if you're tracking your calories, you could schedule your snacks, which totally works. Hey, Stefani. Hey, Stefani. This week, I had extra calories and wasn't hungry anymore. However, I was afraid I'd be ravenous the next day and ate until my caloric budget was complete. What would you have done with the extra calories? Uh, what I'd have done is I'd have waited and seen. See, you were worried you were going to be ravenous the next day, so when in doubt, you ate. I, on my journey, don't remember when it happened, I flipped a switch in my head and I said, when in doubt, don't eat because I can always eat later. But once I've eaten, I can't uneat and I'll never know if I actually needed to eat or not. In this case, I've been in this exact scenario that you've described here more times than I can remember on my journey and since uh, in the maintenance side of the journey, sometimes when I'm doing different things with food, I've, I've experienced this. For me, I just don't eat it. If I, now, if I'm hungry, I'll eat. Sure, sure. But if I'm not hungry and I have calories left over, I don't eat. I just throw the calories the next day. So there were many times where I wouldn't have breakfast scheduled the next morning in my calorie budget, and I had calories left over at night, and I'm like, oh, no, I don't have breakfast scheduled. But remember, I just didn't eat 300 calories, and it's calories per week, not calories per day. So if I wake up the next day and I'm hungry, well, then I just eat the calories from yesterday. That's why you got to, Estefani, start thinking it as calories per week. You're, this is, I'm assuming here, you were thinking of, if I don't eat these calories, I'm not going to get to eat them. So it's eat them now or don't eat them at all. No, you could just eat them tomorrow. Like, set, wait. Like, if you're not hungry, don't eat. All right. He read my lazy bed message. That's right, I did. But I don't know if you're lazy. Your guess is, look, the other day I stayed in bed till like, yesterday I stayed in bed till like 10. You know, sometimes I just don't feel like getting up. Do I have a take on stoicism? It's been valuable life lessons. I learned about stoicism a couple of years ago. And it was cool to start learning about stoicism because it aligned with a lot of how I already saw the world and was approaching things. There's some things that are different, but the more I'm learning about stoicism, the more I see actually it has a, I thought stoicism was not quite enough on the emotional stuff. I am learning that stoicism, in fact, has quite a bit of emotionality to it, uh, the more I'm kind of diving into it. But I really enjoy a lot of aspects of stoicism. I think actually, I think a lot of people would benefit from taking on Stoic, uh, Stoic phil philosophies and principles. I don't, I don't ascribe to any single dogma or um, way of living in this regard. I, because I, I just don't believe there's a one size fits all. I, I think you have to look at different. You have to take a little bit of everything and find something that works for you. And but I've noticed there's a lot of crossover, like presence and being fully present. That seems to exist across multiples. Uh, multiple disciplines in life and multiple philosophical approaches to life. And I, so I think like that's an example where there's a truth. So if I can see something that exists in multiple philosophies, I'm like, okay, well, we're just rediscovering the same thing. We're testing the same thing. It's like gravity. And, and so that always makes me happy to see that. Uh, when in doubt, don't eat. Love this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, River, you said stoicism helped my mindset a bit during the weight loss journey. Yeah, I, I seriously, I don't think anybody would be uh, doing themselves a disservice if they uh, learned about stoicism. YouTube Live is way better than Facebook. Actually got a notification for live for once, right? Facebook is big old stupid head. I'm with you. I keep reaching a goal and then celebrate by eating. I get back on track the next day. How do I stop doing that? You stop acting like f celebrations and food go together. In your mind, what you're telling me is you think celebrations and food are linked. They're not. Try having a celebration and not having any food. But that's not a weight loss one. You've got to break the mindset in your head that celebrations mean food. That's why you gain weight. Because life is full of celebrations. And if you think I celebrate, I should have food. But you're just going to keep eating. And just because it's a celebration, it doesn't get you out of eating when you're hungry. It's real simple. If you're, Are you hungry? No. Then don't eat. Now, are there actual bona fide special occasions where you will eat when you're not hungry? Sure. Like a birthday, your birthday. Yeah, that would be one. Thanksgiving, if you're an American. Yeah, Thanksgiving might be one. Maybe you've got a family reunion. That might be one. But celebrating that you lost two pounds? No, that's not a special occasion. So uh, you got to break you got to break the mentality in your head that celebrations and food go together. All right. 
Oh, <laughs> Julie, if I've learned anything from the show Naked and Afraid, it's that many of us have a good 21 days before we starve. Yeah, I have zero problems telling some of y'all. Just be hungry for a few hours. Oh, Chris, this is so terrible. It's not. It's really not. You'll be fine. You won't die. It might be a little uncomfortable, but you need to practice feeling uncomfortable. So <laughs> I gained my weight back from one year of starting. I'm back at square one. Well, you did it once. You can do it again. But this time you'll do even better because you got all the lessons from the last time. This wasn't a failure. You just learned another way not to lose weight. So when you go to lose weight this time, make sure you're doing it differently than you did last time and make sure you're working on maintenance. Sounds like you lost weight, but you didn't figure out maintenance until it was too late. My advice, start working on maintenance now. Is there an exercise level known to trigger hunger? Uh, I mean, not like a a de facto standard like it's definitely this but i can tell you if you make a sudden increase to cardio you'll have a temporary increase in in appetite potentially it's called the hunger uh, the cardio bump hunger bumps cardio spike but basically people refer to when you you do a sudden increase i had one just a little bit ago i did an increase and all of a sudden i was like for two days i was insanely hungry like no amount of food could fill me and you know, I was having like 3,200 calories, and but my normal day is like 22, 2,400 calories. And uh, so, yeah, cardio, but it's temporary. So don't, I'm not suggesting you should avoid it, but if it happens and you happen to see like, hey, I went on a, a bump to my cardio, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't fret about it too much. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. All right. If you got questions, you can ask them, but I think we're going to go to the, I got a bucket full of post-it notes with talking points. So I'm going to reach in here and pull out another talking point. Self-improvement versus self-healing. Self-improvement versus self-healing. Do you know the difference? Did you know there's a difference between self-improvement and self-healing? Self-healing is going to help you recover from what's already happened. Self-improvement is going to take you as you are and take actions that might result in you being improved in the future in some way. And it's vital, if you're an emotional leader, that you do both of these. That you self-heal, but that you also self-improve. Because sometimes your emotional eating is happening because something from your past is getting triggered when something presently happens. Like maybe you have in the past been um, rejected by somebody. And now when anything in your life looks even remotely close to rejection, you feel a dis an inappropriate amount of anxiety around it that doesn't match the situation. But it's because it's being triggered by your past. And so you turn to food. The way you resolve this is not dieting off the weight because that has nothing to do with this. And the way you resolve this isn't by taking your trigger foods out of your house because you're a grown-ass adult with a debit card and keys and a phone that can access uh, Uber Eats. So it's not that. It, you have to take away the trigger. And it's not the event because things rejection is a part of life, yo. You know that. What you must do is heal the past so that when you get near some rejection, you react proportionally to it. You don't overreact due to a past experience. It doesn't have to be trauma, right? It, it could just be a past experience. So you self-heal, which will help you work on your emotional eating. And this is a whole thing. But now self-improvement is looking to the future because as I said, you can't avoid situations where you may be rejected. It's a part of life, yo. And there's going to be uncomfortable, unpleasant, difficult parts of life. You know this. And you know that there's nothing you can do to stop them in the future. So stop bellyaching about the unchangeable. You know it's coming. You don't know what's coming. You don't know when it's coming. You don't know for how long you're going to endure it. But you know it's coming. And the answer is you are getting too stressed out now. If you're turning to food now and you've recent past been turning to food, that means when life gets stressful, you are not strong enough to handle it. You have to get stronger. It's not make the stressful parts of life go away because life be stressful, yo, and life's not going to stop being stressful. 
So the answer is not wish for life to be less stressful. The answer is to wish for you to be more skillful through self-improvement, through self-betterment. And it won't happen by mistake, and it won't happen from reading a book. And it won't happen from listening to an audiobook. And it won't happen from talking to people. All of that's important, but it's going to happen by you practicing it. It's going to happen by you practicing it. So make sure you're doing your self-healing work to heal your past so you stop overreacting right now based on the past and start doing self-improvement to improve yourself in the future so that you're stronger and things don't affect you so much. Things just sort of bounce off you. That's what we're looking for. All right. Great topic. Yeah, I I like that one. I like that one. I like to really separate those two. Let's look here. All right. I remember walking around Coles for 45 minutes, unable to cross over into the regular size section because I was convinced I was still in larger size and tried not everything. <laughs> uh, I remember I was on my journey. I needed a winter coat. It came around a winter. I was living in Chicago. I didn't have one that fit me anymore because I definitely lost weight. And I'm in the larges and I'm like, these look too big. These, these look like they should fit, but they're too big. And so I'd go to the small and I'd hold it up and I'm like, this is for a child. This isn't going to fit me. And I'd put it on and it would fit me. And I would just stand there in the store and be like, in disbelief, like, this fits me. This is breaking my brain. This is not supposed to fit me. And I'd have to like really get my brain to wrap its head around that, acknowledging it. Charlie, they, yes, they go hand in hand for me. Heal to improve. Yes, but they're two separate things, though. Just because you're self-healing does not mean you're doing self-improvement work. It's not the same thing. And just because you're doing self-improvement work doesn't mean you're self-healing. You can improve but not heal, and you can heal but not improve. They are two separate things. I go shopping sometimes, and it's like a six-year-old version of me is buying things on an unlimited budget. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's how I used to eat. <laughs> Totes yeet, yo. <laughs> Candace and I like to talk like hip, cool teenagers, but they just think we're hella cringe because we are. It's really, it's really ridiculous. We have no idea what we're doing. <laughs> they love it when I dab. They hate it. It is overwhelming the first time you go to shop for normal sizes when you no longer have just one section. Yeah, it's trippy. And once you get into the large and below, you'll start to notice different brands. Like some brands, I'm a small and other brands, I'm a medium. And yeah, in the same store. So that's been kind of trippy. They can be that different. Uh, Last year, I improved, but I did not heal. And that's why I gained all my weight back. See, this is one of the things that I talk about. Like maintenance is going to require self-healing. Weight loss will require, at a minimum, self-improvement. Probably some self-healing, though, too. But maintenance, 100%. Long-term maintenance requires self-healing. Because you cannot spend decades being morbidly obese without it fucking up your head. Seriously, yesterday, I swore I saw my gut in the mirror. It was the strangest thing that happened. I was standing there next to Candace, and there was this weird thing. I'm like, I could see in my mind. I thought I saw a gut, and I immediately turned it. In. I'm like, no, there wasn't there. Uh, a friend of mine, Mike Pridgen, y'all may have followed him, but he calls it phantom gut. Hundred percent agree with that. So at a minimum, even if nothing traumatic had happened in your past, you did have something traumatic if you were 100 plus pounds overweight. Being that big for a long time fucks with your brain. It it messes with you. You will have to heal from that. You will have to heal from that. First time I lost weight was in high school. I remember all I had was baggy pants that I had to hold up and my mom had to buy me a new wardrobe. It's a weird feeling. Yeah, it's when you're a kid, you're growing up and you're sizing out of clothes that direction. So we sort of get used to growing out of clothes. It's strange to grow down through clothes the other way. All right, what time is it? All right, I got one more time. I got time for one more talking point. Let's reach and grab a single talking point. All right. No, that's too similar from one of those. I already did. I want to do a different one. (sighs) 
Oh, no. Nah. Yeah, 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 yeah. This one's good. You don't quit the diet. You quit the experience. You've never quit a diet. You've quit the experience of in your in your head. That's all you've ever done. You don't quit the diet. You quit the thoughts. Because think about what happens when you're on a diet. It can sometimes become a very miserable place in your head. And a lot of y'all did the same thing I did. You decided to diet in a way that was actually physically uncomfortable too. Like, oh, I love just 800 calories a day and shakes. This is awesome. No, it was miserable. It was awful. It was terrible. Like, I hated having to look at foods that I wanted and be like, oh, I can't have it ever. Because if I have that, it's going to make me fat. I hated that. And then when I'm having it, my brain, I'm like, you're just choosing to make yourself fat. Why are you doing this? And so I would try to turn off my brain and pump sounds. Like, I would just be terrified to live in my own head. And so I would quit. I have quit weight loss that was working. I have quit working diets multiple times. I was losing weight. I, it's not like I was on a special occasion. I was here in the same town. I just one day decided I'm going to take a break and then never got back on it. And it was working. The scale at my gym now, many years ago on a previous weight loss attempt, I was swimming several days a week and I was doing keto. And I was loving the weight loss, but I was getting real sick and not eating bread. I was really beginning to miss carbs in my life. And it was getting into the summer. There was more barbecues. I was even thinking of saying this like, I just, I could do this if I could just have corn. I just want to have corn with everybody, but it's too many carbs. But I just wanted to have corn with a steak. That's it. If I could have a corn with the steak or maybe just a potato. Like if I could just have a potato, I'd be fine. And so I would, I was miserable, miserable. But I loved all the weight I was losing. So I kept doing it. And then I remember getting on the scale, thinking, oh, I'll bet I'm going to be 220. I'll bet I'm so close to 220. And it said 225. And I was like, you know, I really like 225. I really wanted to be 220. You know what? I'm just going to stop and tell everybody I'm 220. And so I started telling people I was 220 pounds. Because I'm like, well, I'm going to get to 220. I'm going to get there. So I'll just go ahead and start telling everybody I am, but I'm at 225. And I was really discouraged by that, seeing 225. I was on the scale at the gym right after a workout. I didn't understand at the time about inflammation. I didn't understand that I actually could have been 220 and I just had fluctuated up five pounds. I didn't know that. I just assumed I was 225 pounds. And so what happened is I, um, I just stopped. And even later that day, I got in the truck with my dad and my mom and I remember feeling amazing. And my mom and dad were like, you look really good because I had just bought some new clothes, some new shorts and a shirt because it was good. It was good. Weather's good. Nice. And I said to them, I'll never go back. I feel amazing. I, I, you know, I'm never letting myself get that big again. I did. I did. In fact, a lot bigger. I never started again. Not for real. I would try to get something, but I could never make it past a couple of weeks. Yeah. Yeah. But I quit because the experience of losing weight just wasn't fun. I was enjoying the results, but I didn't like the, the process of getting there. If you like the process, you'll keep doing it even if you don't like the results. Think about it. Why You, you don't like the results of gaining weight, but you still keep doing that because you like the process. The process is fun. If you enjoy the process, you'll keep doing it because the fun is in the doing. If you can make the action fun, you'll keep doing it. And the results will take care of themselves. It's not like you get planned to gain weight. You don't need a plan to lose weight. You just need to plan to do the things that lead to losing weight. So, something just think about. I'm going to wrap up here. Welcome to another Monday live stream. So good to see you all here. These will keep getting better. I'm going to add some more things. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification button if you would like to be notified when I go live. I will be going live every Monday. I plan on doing more of these. I don't know when that's going to start, but these are fun. I enjoy these, and this works pretty well. And if you want to be notified when I do go live, subscribing, pressing that notification bell will be the best way to make sure you get notified when I go live. I also will be posting in my Facebook group anytime I go live. That's CTC support group. You can find a link to that by going to crystalcoaching.com. 
And if you want to be part of my group coaching program, you can join the Guild of Champions by going to theguildofchampions.com. we got a lot of guild members here in the comments right now. Recognize your names. Good to see you all. Have a great rest of your week. For those of you in the guild, I'll see you later today in our accelerator. And then we got some more meetings planned out this week. And next week for me is spring break. So I do not know if I will be here live next week. That is a big old maybe. Uh, or because spring break. <laughs> and I'm traveling for it. Have a great day, everybody.